What I really wanted to talk to you about today is uh, the Supreme Court and the, the replacement for uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and what you think that means for business. Well, I think there are a few things. First, actually, returning to the topic I just touched upon, if uh, the new justice is uh, nominated and seated, uh, you know, before the election, I think it's and the Democrats then take over the Senate, it's very likely that the filibuster will be uh, a historical artifact at that point and will be eliminated, uh, possibly meaning expanded numbers of seats on the Supreme Court, but also just more legislation. We've gotten used to, despite reconciliation and the various ways that you can do things in the Senate with 50 votes, the filibuster has been that saucer to uh, the hot tea coming from the House. And it would uh, the Senate will be a different place in the future without that. So one consequence will be more legislative activity. Uh, and then on the Supreme Court itself, uh, obviously, there are lots of very important cases from the Affordable Care Act case to others that would be influenced. But I think to do the full analysis, you have to take into account not only whether there's a new justice now, but whether there would be an expansion of the Supreme Court in 2021 in response. Would you, would you as, a, as a Democrat, would you advocate to expand the court? Or do you think that would be a mistake? I think it's too soon to, 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 to make those kinds of judgments. We have to see how this all plays out. But I, I, I think, regardless of what I think, uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure to do exactly that. You know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, did say that she did not believe the court should be expanded. Look, again, we have to see how this all plays out. Uh, there are norms on uh, that are, you know, being uh, debated and, and being examined. Uh, all I'm saying is obviously there's a lot of pressure from the, uh, the parts of the Democratic Party to uh, eliminate the filibuster, to expand the Supreme Court, and that could well be a consequence of seating a justice, uh, you know, also uh, to the contradiction of uh, Justice Ginsburg's wishes. Right. Peter, given your travels and the people you talk to, do you think that the business community broadly would like to see a more conservative court? It seems to cut both ways uh, insofar as uh, a, deregula a deregulatory world, you might imagine, might be uh, beneficial or, or, or the business community might think it's beneficial to them. But at the same time, you have companies like Apple and Tim Cook uh, pushing for dreamers, uh, for example, on the immigration front and so many other issues that they've been supportive of that the that, that conservatives might not be? Well, I think what the business community wants first uh, and foremost is stability. So uh, the, the biggest risk in all of this is exactly what we were just discussing, um, that um, we are in such a polarized environment and we're right in the midst of uh, election season that that stability that is crucial to uh, business planning and uh, and conducting business, regardless of what the rules are, you need a stable set of rules. I think that's the biggest risk as opposed to the exact uh, makeup of the court, although obviously there are effects from that too. Um, you know, you've talked about uh, the, the potential for volatility around the election. What do you think happens if there's uh, only, you know, if it's four and four, if there's, a, if there's an only eight person justice? Well, it depends on, on the particular uh, case that is being considered. For example, for the Affordable Care Act case, uh, that case presumably would then be returned back to the lower court. Um, it, it's going to vary depending on uh, case by case. It's not a good situation to have uh, an even number of justices, let's put it that way. You want to be able to have rulings one way or another, whatever they may be, um, and that requires uh, an odd number of justices. Um, uh, no, I was saying in the context, actually, of the election, oh, which I is see. to say whether you, if you were to get into a Bush-Gore situation, yeah. Uh, look, we're, we're playing through so many different contingencies, whether, uh, A, the election is definitive enough to avoid those kinds of uh, uh, issues, what the role of the Congress and the House is. Um, so you're asking me to answer a hypothetical that's almost impossible, given all of the, uh, all of the different factors that go into it. 